The penultimate race in Season 1 of Gamer and R is held here at Auto Club Speedway. We head back to Southern California one more time for 38 laps under the lights at Fontana for Race 19 of the Sportsman Series. This is the In-N-Out 300. Last race at Canadian Tire, we saw Evan Hunter take the pole, and now his points rival Marcus Yepes will start first tonight. Starting on the outside front row is the number 04 MW Racing Toyota of Pre McShane once again. The number 11 will start 6th, third on the outside lane. We'll see how he cuts through the cars once the green flag flies to see if he can catch Marcus Yepes and pass him, as he has stretched the points gap back out by 60 points, a bigger cushion than what he had after Thompson. And for the last realistic points contender, DJ Reed, he'll be starting 8th, though he does have the momentum on his side after closing the gap last race and winning the last event here at Auto Club earlier in the season. As the field of 21 drivers rounds the final corners, we'll see which ones will advance to Michigan with a shot at the first ever Gamer and R Championship. We saw an amazing race out here early in the season. What will we see tonight with a whole lot more on the line? Green flag is out. We're racing at Auto Club. Marcus Yepes had to chase it up the hill the first lap and is already relegated back to fourth and Pre McShane steals uh, lap number one back there. He has to let off again. He's already back into the clutches of Evan Hunter. That's uh, Doge Borkington and Mathis Wells who all got into the wall a little bit back there. But I believe they might be able to stay in the pack. So right now it's Martinez trying to chase down Pre McShane. Both of them looking for the first this season. Uh, another one looking for the first is Jay Jefferson. Uh, this is Aiden Smith. He won at uh, the second Atlanta race earlier this year. As Hunter is going to slide up into the wall. And then get off of the wall. But he'll be back outside the top 15 now I believe. But... Smith won the second Atlanta race. He's looking for his second, but back here, Onjek, Garcia, they're all looking for their first win of the season. They're trying to use the very end of the season as an opportunity to get that first win. Jefferson trying to make a move on Martinez. A few of them slide up into the wall. That's the 25 sideways. He slides around. The 10 is also up into that high groove. And that almost caused an accident right there with the 25 getting a little sideways. We are already starting to see cars lose grip here uh, in this race. Uh, it, it's nighttime, which is different than the first race we had here at Auto Club. But I guess it is a, a bit of a hot night here. Uh, in Southern California, where the cars are starting to slip side around. Marcus Yepes might be the next victim of that. I think they actually might be crashing back there. No, it's just more people sliding up into the wall. That's Henson and Onjack. So who knows? We might just see a more spread out race because of the handling issues. Because these guys seem to chase it up a way a lot more than they were uh, in the, the first race here. So here's Yepes going for a pass on Martinez. That would get him into the top five if he, uh, if he is successful. But we'll have to see here. Heading into turn number one, that's Garcia also making a move for third on the 89 of Aiden Smith. Garcia was good here in the first event here at uh, Auto Club. But was not able to seal the deal. Uh, the gap got... Closed down at the very end. 
between him and DJ Reed, but ultimately it was a big move from Jay Jefferson that kind of canceled it out. Speaking of big moves by Jay Jefferson, he is going for the lead on the 04 Toyota. Three wide in the back. That's going to cause Smith and McShane to chase it up the racetrack, but they are going to keep it off of the wall. This is three forwards, three wide, heading into turn number three, but looks like Teague is going to back out for the moment. Keep it double file back there and let the 77 lead the lane. That's going to allow him to get a good run on that 28 Dodge. And Dodge is going to have more power next season in numbers as they're going to have a brand new three car team owned by Benedict Murdo the third as a 28 almost gets up near the wall as they're battling for second now that the 48 has taken away the lead Garcia is going to take it over from McShane so your top five now 48 31 04 with the 77 lurking right behind Now it's McShane looking down low, but it's likely that the 31 will get a shove from the 77, I would have thought, but that is not the case. The 77 was going to get the 04 a shove, but he decided to go down low himself, none of which would have benefited the 31 as he is now back to fourth place. Aiden Smith running the last spot in the top five. DJ Reed having another good run uh, at his at what is essentially his uh, well, other home track, I guess. He's got a couple of them in California here in the Gamernar Sportsman Series. But now we've got a few battles within the top five here. Fourth position within the top six, I should say. The 04 McShane looked down low for the lead on Jefferson, could not complete the pass. Jefferson, he also came close. We were last here at Auto Club. And here's Garcia once again trying to make a move on Yepes now. The 89 also got down low on the 99, I believe, or maybe it was the other way around. I'm not quite sure. But either way, it looks like the 99 Teague is going to try and use that lower lane, way lower lane, to try and get below the 31. And now Yepes is trying to try and pull down low for second. He is definitely want to go to. Uh, he's definitely going to want a good result here today, and a win would be the cherry on the ice cream Sunday, because that would give him a whole lot of points in this championship battle. But it got real close there between the 04 and 77. 04, you know, almost got. Contact with the 77's quarter panel, and now they are battling big time back here. Colin Teague seems to love that inside lane, as he's taking it three wide. I think the 77's... No, he didn't scrape it that time, but he ran it up wide once again, like we've seen people do, and now he is in a huge pack back here for second place. Reed continues to say nice, DJ that is, uh, Anderson Reed right in front of him, and now he has joined this battle. Pushing the inside lane. There's a huge stack up that's going to allow Decker DeLow to get into this battle. So you might just uh, start to see a pack form here around the halfway point uh, in the in and out 300. And back here just outside the top 10. This is Evan Hunter. He is in 12th. Trying to pass the 0-2. Gets into him. Getting a little desperate. We saw a 77 be desperate last race in the race before at uh, Thompson. And Evan Hunter probably knows that Yepes is in the pack ahead of him that he has lost touch with. Although he is mired way back through uh, the middle lanes. Oh, look at the 69 trying to move maneuver in between the 29 and 28 of Delello and Martinez to try and get to the inside. Looks like that'll work out for him. As Anderson Reed's going to scrape the wall, let's see if that could possibly be a uh, pawn in the 11's uh, journey to get up to the front. As he's going to slingshot right back by Anderson Reed. As 
So now Evan Hunter just will have to pass Zachary DeLello in order to get into the top five here. But look at DeLello. He's taking it way down low, trying to make it four wide. There's no help for either lane except for really the top, which is going to be able to use that draft to carry a run up the high side. DeLello into the 69, made a bit of contact there. Now, while this is going on, the battle for the lead has just started back up again. The 4 is going to try and go for a couple spots here, but it looked like she was going to go for two. Now, maybe it's just one, with Colin Teague now starting to make his way up to the very front of the pack. He was around the middle of this top 10 zone, and he has now entered uh, the battle for the lead. And speaking of uh, entering the battle for the lead, Evan Hunter into the top 10 with uh, the 12's exit. So I thought he was going to have to pass the low, but that is not the case. He is in the top 10. And on the 77, he's hearing the Jaws theme in his car as the 11 gets closer and closer to this lead pack. He's going to have to start making some moves here, which he was kind of denied as uh, the 3189 kind of sandwiching him in. Nothing really anyone could do there. That's just the way the pack is... Uh, running right here on the front straightaway and through those uh, third and fourth turns. But the 77 seems to be boxed in here, and he's really hoping that he doesn't get too close to that wall. But here comes the 11. Closing on in. Bit of a gap form between second and third. The 04 and 48 have uh, kind of gapped the, the rest of the pack. But with how Auto Club is, we'll probably see that uh, gap close between the 31 and 89. They're, they're definitely being very orderly right here. They are single file with the first uh, five cars in this pack. The first battle being back here with the 77, 28, and 11. And through goes Hunter. Almost tries to clear the 77 when he... Uh, wasn't quite clear, but now he waits his turn and gets on by. But now Yepa is trying to haunt the back bumper of Hunter's Dodge as he is right behind. Back here, back, or back up here, I should say, the 04 is taking the lead away from the 48. They are really mixing it up back here. DJ Reed, that is your uh, third place in points championship contender in the wall. And he falls back uh, into this area back here with Pelagia. So he's going to have to try and catch all the way back up to the front. Not the day that uh, DJ Reed was hoping for if he ends up back there. Which he is certainly hoping not to, as he needs to have a huge day in order to get back into this fight. 29 up high, leaving room for the 31 and 11 to go on by. Maybe you're going to give Hunter a bit of trouble. He hasn't quite passed him yet. Evan Hunter on the low lane, the 77 trying to run the middle. Now Yepes right back to the 11 with Hunter right behind the 29. Now Aiden Smith is gonna run it wide. This keeps it off the wall. That's another spot for Hunter. But we'll see here. These are teammates. This is a team owner and a driver right here. One of these drivers fighting for the title. But also one of these drivers leaving the team at the end of the season. So now Yep is trying to go to the inside. Jefferson, the next one to go up high, and they're jockeying up there for position nearly, uh, I want to say three wide back there. I was going to say four wide, but it probably just the, the way the cars were running their lanes here at the multi-groove Fontana racetrack, and 
Look at this. This is starting to get intense. Now the 28 is going to pull up front. Jefferson trying to go to the middle with the 04. Now the 04 pulls inside. Yep, is trying to go down low on the 89. Trying to make that pass. The 28 way up high. And that might have just uh, dismantled the that pack right there, that big pack. But they still continue to sort of battle contact between the 89, 29, and 11. That's going to force Hunter up high and give that spot to Marcus Yepes. And now Yepes goes three wide on his two teammates. For the lead, the 48-04, duking it out once again. You saw Martinez make a cameo appearance up front. But that uh, appearance is over now. As uh, the two dominant cars of the day, Jay Jefferson and McShane, are fighting for the lead. Both of them, their team has, uh, all the drivers on their team has wins except them. Except one is a driver and one's an owner. All right, Jefferson gets to run up the high side down the front straight away that time around. Both of them have cars behind them, heading into this first corner. McShane gets a good shot going into turn number two. But now the person who gave her the shot, the 31, tried pulling inside. That might have canceled it out just a little bit. Hunter has closed back in on the 77, right to the back bumper, pretty much. But Yepes has the 28, right in front of him. There's the battle for second, maybe the 31 and 04 once again. It'll be very fascinating to see if that pack can kind of condense again, because our championship contenders have kind of stayed behind uh, in this main pack. They've they've been on the outskirts, a bit of contact there between the 77 and 28. But they've been they've been in the battle nonetheless. So they just haven't been able to really catch up to the leaders. But then again, the three the the leaders have been really the same three cars all races. The 28 is going to hit the wall there. As, yeah, it has been the Jefferson McShane uh, Garcia show right here as the 04 now pulls down low. Can the 31 make it three wide? He will. Better rubbing between the two there. All right, this could be Yepes' chance as he pulls down low on his teammate Zachary DeLolo. Probably getting the draft of Colin T heading into turn number one. As the 89 and 11 separate themselves from this lead pack. Here comes Yepes down on the bottom. A dive bomb move on the 31. The 48 goes way high. Here comes the 04. Definitely going to take the lead there. The 29, 31, 77, 29. There to follow. Oh, but now DeLello might be taking it three wide. But doors closed on him. Now Jefferson using the power of that middle groove. To get back in to third place, maybe even the lead. He was looking a bit lower there on Colin Teague, who has surprised uh, everyone and gone to the point. And now this 04 is going to scrape the wall. That could be it for her day contending for the lead, but that's going to block the 77 and allow Hunter to get by. But we'll see here. Now, middle lane through three and four has been a bit stronger than the inside. It looks like that will be the case. As look at the way the 77 carries the momentum and look at what he does with it. He's back to the inside of DeLello here, but DeLello has that air coming from the 04. It looks like it won't matter. The 29 is not going to hit the wall. So now... Yep, as into the top five here, but the 11's not gonna let him go at it alone. 
slides up a little bit, but now he is going to enter that middle lane. 77 was kind of able to run a bit lower. Now he's low on the front straight away back up front here. The 31 and 48 continue the battle, but the battle for the lead pretty much uncontested with the 99 for now. Oh, the 11 wide, but he does not touch the wall. Now let's get things straight here. It is going to need to be more than one spot that will get the uh, 77 into a uh, good chance with the championship. I mean, anything can happen going into Michigan as the 11 goes high once again through 3 and 4. We're usually seen in turns 1 and 2, but that time it was through the final two corners. But yeah, anything can happen in Michigan, but with a realistic shot at the title... Uh, the FS will definitely need more than a 10-point increase uh, going into that race as the 89 tries to pull to the inside of him here. But uh, real quick, we need to look at the system real quick. Yepes is back by 60. So if that gap was to stay the same... Heading into Michigan, which it probably won't. Let's say where he finishes right now, that's 5th uh, compared to Hunter's 7th. That's 50 points. So, 2nd place gets 140 points. 10th place gets 100 points. So, it'll take a great result from the 77 and a outside the top 10 result from uh, the 11 to really propel Yepes back into... Michigan with a great shot with the title at least, but I don't know. These guys seem to be working something here as we have just uh, five laps remaining in this caution free event. As the 99 goes up high, leaving room for the 48 and 31 to battle side by side throughout the corner and still come away with a decent lead. Now, Teague may be in danger of getting passed by the 77 here. Closest car in the seven, uh, the 11's windshield is Aiden Smith. And behind is the 29. And they have a... Now... We'll look at that later as they are fighting for the lead here. They almost went four wide once again for it. But yeah, pretty much a 7 tenths of a second gap between the 89 and 11. With the 77 still making up spots. If he finishes 4th, that would be a 45 point lead. Uh, yeah, 45 point lead for Evan Hunter going into Michigan. 3 to go here at Fontana. Jefferson sees these 3 battling behind him. 3 wide. The 31 slides up. Into Teague. 48 didn't really have the best corner either. Here comes Yepes. And Yepes is going to take it third. That's going to be 40 points. But this race isn't over yet. That 77 could still get past. Or he could still catch up to this top two and pass them. We'll have to see. As we approach the end of this race, two laps to go at Fontana. It's been a thriller so far. They've been battling throughout the field, just like we saw in the first event here. Here comes a 31 for the lead. That's going to be the Ford Power on the inside line. Yepes dives it down low. It doesn't stick. Now the 48 gets to run up the top side. Coming to the white flag. One more lap to go and then in and out 300. The top three single file. Will happen into turn number one. The 48 up high. A 31 down low. A bit too low maybe. Down the back stretch, the 77 pulls to the inside. That might be 
the deciding factor here. Jay Jefferson has been close multiple times this season. He's going to finally pull away with the win here at Auto Club. Hector Garcia second, Marcus Yepes third, Evan Hunter in seventh. The 99-04-89, the ones in between them. Just to name out the rest of the top 10, the 29 of Zachary Delolo. He's been a hot streak lately. Definitely not enough to get him into the uh, championship fight. But he is going to have a great points finish, I believe, heading into this uh, last round here. As Mathis Wells, Stephen Cologne did not have good days, nor did the well, 69 got tapped in, so that's pretty good enough. But yeah, we'll have to see there. Um... But yeah, that is the the top ten. DJ Reed was not able to be too much up front. Kind of mired. I don't want to say in the back, because got a top ten. But this pack was a bit more spread out at the end. As you saw there, the it was pretty much five cars with any uh, a second of each other to battle out for the win. Well. Aiden Smith was a bit farther back. I, Hunter did everything he could to close on in. He got that gap back down to two tenths, and uh, but couldn't get there. He finishes seventh once again, and yeah, that is a uh, let's see. Third place gets a uh, hundred thirty-five. Seventh place gets hundred fifteen. So it would be a twenty-point increase from uh, Marcus Yepes. He will be. 40 points back. That is the same uh, gap he had after Thompson, I believe, until Hunter was able to expand it again. So um, it's pretty much like an entire never happened uh, for the top two. And, um, yeah. So I want to say that 69 is, yeah, he's got to be officially out, I want to say. I, we'll have to see how far he is back. He will gain 100 points out of this day exactly, while the other two will gain more. So uh, the most you can gain on a person in points is 140. Um... With the first person getting 175 points, last place getting 35 points. So I believe that means that everyone that uh, isn't Evan Hunter and Marcus Yepes are mathematically eliminated from this championship fight. So we will see a two-car battle for this championship heading into the similar two-mile oval here, uh, like here at Fontana. Over in Michigan, but the surface couldn't be more different as uh, Michigan newly repaved, and uh, it's definitely a lot less bumpy. But we still got to go with the rest of the results. 28 of Kirsten Martinez rounds up 11th. Pelagia, 12th. Goforth, 13th. Uh, he was beginning to look a little consistent. Around the middle to the end, but uh, I believe that'll do it for his top 10 points results hopes. Uh, Nelson Reeves, 14th. Rose Henson, 15th. Mathis Wells, 16th. That might end his hopes at a top 5 spot in the points. And Stephen Colon, just really, didn't really see him up front. He rounds up uh, 17th, and the three slipstream cars, they kind of qualified out back, couldn't make their way to the front. Landon Thomas, Lynn Bell, and Doge Borkington. And also Peter on Jack at the, jeez, at the last tail end of the field. I literally cannot catch a break the past few races. I'm not, qu I'm not quite sure what happened this time, but... Uh, Nonetheless, tw 21st. And um, 
So it was a great race here at Auto Club. Plenty of intense moments battling throughout the field for the lead, for spots in the points, and ultimately we will see a closer championship battle than we would have seen if the uh, Canadian Tire race was the penultimate race. So Yepes closed in. All he needs to do is finish... Uh, uh, eight spots ahead if he's within the top 10 but if he if one of them gets outside the top 10 it's going to be a lot easier for them to pull out the tighter tight tight title jeez um but yeah these guys mentioned in the pre-race is a, a lot of practice for for michigan has two very similar tracks but different in their own ways. Same shape, same distance. But we'll have to see how the smoother surface of Michigan runs compared to the bumpier Auto Club Speedway multi-groove racetrack. They're both fairly multi-groove, but this one uh, shines. Whole different style that we would see at Michigan. Uh, International Speedway, and that is how we're going to clo close off the season. Uh, afterwards, of course, we have the All-Star Race, so that's something to look forward to, but Michigan is where the points races come to a close, and it's been a great season so far, and uh, can't wait to see how this championship fight ends up. It'll be Evan Hunter versus Marcus Yepes officially. Heading into the finale in Michigan, it will be one of those two fighting for a championship. Everyone else, uh, better luck next time, next season, just over the horizon. But for now, thank you for watching, Gamer and R. We'll see you next time.